Today's video is sponsored by Babbel, the number one language learning app in the world. Babbel is the best app in the market right now, providing award-winning courses in Spanish, French, German, Italian, and many more languages. For me personally, I have a goal of becoming fluent in Spanish as well as traveling to Spanish speaking countries and have been using Babbel on a daily basis, learning through listening, reading, writing and speaking activities. I am also studying Italian, Danish and Norwegian on the app. What I love about Babbel is that unlike other language learning apps, the courses have been created by genuine speakers of the languages and don't run via an algorithm or computer generated material. And furthermore, the course content prepares a learner for real life situations. There are no adverts, which is a huge bonus, and it has been proven by university studies that just 15 hours of learning on Babbel is the equivalent of studying a full semester of college. Head to the link in the description or check out the pinned comment to get 50% off six months for a limited time only. Thank you to Babbel for sponsoring this video. Mount Isa is an outback mining town located in northwest of Queensland, Australia, and it is notorious for its grim history of murders. According to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, it has a violent crime rate four times higher than the state average. Australian Karen Edwards, aged 23, her partner, New Zealand native Tim Thompson, aged 31, Tim's beloved nine-month-old Doberman named Tristy and the couple's 21-year-old friend Gordon Twaddle, also from New Zealand, embarked on an adventure of a lifetime. They planned on taking a road trip, the route of which beginning at Alice Springs in the Northern Territory. They then planned to travel through Cairns and ride to Melbourne, their final destination, where they wished to spend the festive season with their loved ones. The trio intended on visiting Mount Isa, totalling up at approximately 1,170 kilometres or 727 miles on the road. It was Monday the 2nd of October 1978 when the group departed from Alice Springs. Tim and Karen travelled on a reportedly expensive red and gold 1977 BMW 100S motorcycle with a homemade sidecar, which the dog Tristy rested in during their ride, and Gordon rode his blue 1977 Suzuki GS750 motorcycle. Both motorbikes were registered under Victorian plates. For two nights, the companions camped beneath the stars with the trip having started perfectly. They spent the first night camping at Aileron in Tea Tree, Northern Territory, and then on the 3rd of October they stopped in Wahope, Devil's Marbles and the Three Ways. They had been witnessed speaking with an unidentified male who appeared friendly with the travellers at the Northern Territory rest area of Frowina and subsequently joined them on the final 300 miles or 500 kilometres stretch to Mount Isa. The group camped overnight in the Barry Caves and the next day on Wednesday the 4th of October, Karen, Tim and Gordon checked in to the Mundara Caravan Park located at Mount Isa and were seen by several witnesses conversing with the unknown companion. The next day, on the 5th of October 1978, the trio climbed into the male's brown and white Toyota Land Cruiser, leaving behind not only their camping gear and possessions, but also Tim's dog, Tristy, who had been tied to a tree. The vehicle exited the camping ground with the three friends unaware that they would never return. 
The man in the Toyota returned to the campsite later that day to clear up and was heard calling for Tristy the Doberman. Karen, Tim and Gordon were nowhere to be seen and had mysteriously vanished. On the 6th of October at 6.30am, Tristy was found abandoned at the Mount Isa dump by staff and fortunately she was alive. On the 24th of October, Mount Isa local Stan Harris, an alleged former neighbour of Karen Edwards and his fiancée Kirsten Stryker, were out on a stroll with Stan's greyhounds in Spear Creek, approximately 12 kilometres or 7.5 miles north of Mount Isa, when they made a chilling discovery. In the long grass, they saw the body of Karen Edwards, which was sprawled against a tree and it was evident that she had been shot dead. Police were alerted and little time passed before the bodies of Tim Thompson and Gordon Twaddle were found in similar positions, with the pair having also suffered fatal bullet wounds from a .22 rifle. All three victims' bodies were badly decomposed, having been abandoned to the elements, and their pockets had been emptied of any identification. A lady's watch was discarded nearby, which aided police in identifying the victims. Six days after the first body was discovered, on the 30th of October, gloves, jackets, helmets, tents and various other personal items were recovered by police from the Mount Isa dump, where Tristy had been found a few weeks prior. Initially, police believed that the triple murder at Mount Isa was linked to a handful of other unsolved killings in the area, however, no solid links could be confirmed. Decades passed with no further clues as to who committed the crime and their motives for carrying out such a despicable act. The families of the victims never gave up hope that justice would one day be served. Police made an appeal to the public regarding the deaths of Edwards, Thompson and Twaddle in March of 2019, and within the space of a week, new information provided authorities with leads. In April 2019, following a review of the case by the Cold Case Investigation Team and the Mount Isa Criminal Investigation Branch, Australian news outlets such as the North West Star reported that after almost 40 years of no progress on the case, there were 50 leads, many of which were new to the police. There was a sighting of a man reported riding the red and gold 1977 BMW 100S motorcycle which was missing after the killings. On the 12th of April 2019, after 41 years since the trio's lives were cruelly stolen from them, 63-year-old Bruce John Preston was charged with the triple murder. He was a former prison guard at the Super Maximum Security Prison, Goulburn Jail, located in New South Wales. In 1978, the unemployed diesel mechanic was identified as the man who had stolen the BMW motorbike and was seen driving it a month after the murders, having had the bike cleaned and had several parts, including the wheels, replaced. He said at the time of his arrest in November of 1978, he did not steal the motorbike, but had found it. Furthermore, his brown and white Toyota Land Cruiser was examined by forensic officers as well as firearms which were linked to Preston's home address. And although he was convicted of theft of the motorcycle and fined $300, there was no evidence which incriminated him in the murders. Police appealed for two original witnesses at the Mundara Caravan Park to come forward once again, with a $250,000 reward available for any persons who provide information which leads to conviction. Exemption from prosecution was also offered for any accomplices who could have been involved in the crime. A 1980 police report, which was uncovered in 2019, described the man in the Toyota as Greek or Middle Eastern in appearance, had a beard, wore smart attire and spoke with a heavy accent. 
Upon closer inspection of the report, the description of the murderer did not match Bruce Preston. After being charged, Preston denied his involvement in the crime and being in Mount Isa at the time of the triple murder. However, it contradicted his original statement prior to his arrest where he claimed he was indeed in Mount Isa. Preston's father owned a strikingly similar vehicle to his son and Bruce was also on a motorcycle trip across Australia at the time. He was initially denied bail due to a phone call where he suggested he would rather take his own life before ever being incarcerated. On the 31st of January 2020, Preston was granted bail by the Brisbane Supreme Court after investigating officers were found to have overstated some of the evidence. As of 2020, he is currently under a curfew and must be in contact with police three times a week. The families of Karen, Tim and Gordon endured unbearable heartache at the loss of their loved ones and waited decades before a breakthrough. However, justice is on the cusp of being served.